Hi, this is Lisa. And I'm Kim, and this is our second segment of Training Your Child. So, uh, Solomon 2.15 says, The little foxes spoil the vine. Because it's the little tiny things that they do when they're little that adds up to big things when they're teenagers. And if you don't want a teenager yelling and screaming at you and trying to hit you, then don't let a five-year-old be doing that. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Now the little foxes can be anything from uh, rebellion, lying, stealing, some of the things that parents find cute when they're little. You know, if they tell a little lie, you know, they may laugh at it, but we don't need to put an emphasis on things that will cause them harm later on. We need to destroy the little foxes in their lives. Now one of the things that I trained my children on was uh, rebellion. Now, children don't always know what a word means, so you can say, don't be rebellious. Well, they don't even know how to try not to be that because they don't understand it. So I might would say, do you know when I tell you to do something and suddenly you feel angry at me or whatever that emotion is, that is the feeling of rebellion. So at an early age, my children were able to tell me what emotion they were having. And I remember one particular time um, when one of my children was very small that they were playing a video game and I walked into the room and I said something to them and they popped off. Now some signs of seeds of rebellion, rolling the eyes, smarting off. Those little foxes need to be abolished out of our households. And not because that we're trying to be uh, dominating, but be because we love our children. And usually I would correct that right then, but through you really need to pray on how to destroy those little foxes in your lives and I remember that I was a little wounded when my son popped off because that wasn't normal behavior in our household and I went to my bedroom and I began to pray and seek God and within a few minutes my son knocked at the door and he was weeping and he said mama I don't even want to come in here and tell you this but I know there's rebellion in my heart and I am sorry and uh, I don't want to do this anymore and I just scooped him up and I loved him but he was able to identify what was going on because he was trained to recognize that. So, if you don't want a rebellious child, you need to tackle that little fox, train your child, and when they grow older, I will tell you, I don't have a rebellious child. I have one that submitted to authority, and it's because those little foxes were destroyed early in his life. Being in a classroom with children for several years, I would read stories of maybe something that showed jealousy, and I would ask kids, even four and five year olds, I would say, do you remember that yucky feel? Have you ever had that yucky feeling when someone has a toy that you don't have? And almost always they would answer, yeah. But that showed me that they, they knew what that was and they knew that it wasn't a good feeling. And I, we could go on, you know, weeks on down the road and I would say something and they would call my attention to, it was that yucky feeling inside and they came to realize that it was something that didn't feel right and they knew they were doing wrong in feeling that. And I, we, I used that example to help them recognize it's something that we need to have under control. So often I was confronted with parents that might come to me and say, my son did this because someone else did this. Well, that was not the other child's fault. It is your child's fault. Sorry. <laughs> but he made the choice. In the garden, the serpent didn't force Eve to eat the fruit. She made the choice to eat the fruit. Eve didn't force Adam to eat the fruit. Adam made the choice to eat the fruit. Adam started the line of bad choices. And you need to make that a, a very important lesson to your child. Make the right choices. It doesn't matter what those around you are doing. You make the right choice and you will be the one rewarded for it. Or if you don't make right choices, you will be the one that suffers the consequences. But no one around you can make you make bad choices. It's your choice to make bad choices. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, and you know what else? We parents can, can actually grow little foxes that spoil the vine in our children by not allowing them to take responsibility for their own actions. They have to take responsibility and it's very hard. I will t I don't see a lot of that these days, but I tell you, if I made a mistake, my father, it didn't matter if I was a preacher's daughter or who I was, I had to own up to that. And it was hard, but it was some of the best things that my parents ever did. It takes some heartache sometimes to do the right things for our children. And you know what? One of the things I learned is my children aren't perfect. 
That's a revelation for some people. They are not perfect. And everything they say may not be the truth. Isn't that hard? Um, yes. Just one last thing. Just share them what you told a teacher um, that you gave counsel here because we had a case where uh, a parent got onto a teacher because their child was influenced by everybody else to do something wrong. It wasn't their child. And your advice is... My, I was advised one time by a preschool teacher that told me, she don't believe everything they tell you about me, and I won't believe everything they tell me about you, because they do tell. <laughs> and when they grow up, you do these things, you're going to have some great children. You're not going to have to worry about little foxes gone wild in their lives.